Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 48 of Screw the Commute podcast. We got a really super duper guest today. He's a New York Times bestselling author. His name is Joel Calm. And his latest book is The Fun Formula. And this is not just some joke book to have a few laughs. It's got specific practical strategies to make your daily life more joyous, both at work and at home. So I'll tell you, bring him on here in a, in a moment. But I hope you didn't miss episode 47, Dr. Howard Haller. I, I gave him the nickname Big Dog Ph.D., He's got 35 years in commercial real estate investing, and he told us how commercial real estate actually has more profits and is easier to buy than a house because the income of the property is way more important than your credit report. And and you don't have to clean toilets, too, and when you get commercial stuff. And trust me, this is not one of those stupid no money down seminars where it costs you 50 grand to learn how to put no money down, right? He's the real deal. I've known him for years. Now, today's sponsor is the Distance Learning School, the Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. Don't even think about retraining yourself or sending your kids to college until you check out our webinar on higher education. I do not want you wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars and putting yourself and your kids under crushing debt. And we'll have uh, the webinar in the show notes at screwthecommute.com slash 48. This is episode 48. All right, let's get to the main event. Joel Calm is the New York Times bestselling author, blockchain enthusiast, professional keynote speaker, social media marketing strategist, live video expert. Boy, this guy has got a lot of stuff. I've known him for years. I didn't know he was doing all this stuff. He's a technologist, a brand influencer, a futurist and an eternal 12-year-old. That's what I always say. I'm 63 going on 12. Uh, with over two decades of experience harnessing the power of the web, publishing social media and mobile applications to expand, reach, and engage in active relationship marketing. Joel is a sought-after public speaker who leaves his audience inspired, entertained, and armed with strategic tools to create highly effective new media campaigns. His latest project is as co-host of the Bad Crypto Podcast, a top cryptocurrency show making the future of digital payments easy to understand, and I really need that. I was thinking about starting my own currency, like Tom's Bad Currency, and see if I could make a million. Anyway, Joel, are you ready to screw? (laughs) You got to finish that statement. I know, you, I know. You, you, you got to. <laughs> the commute, that, the commute that is. <laughs> it reminds me of, uh, remember Blazing Saddles? Yeah. Uh, they're in prison. <laughs> what, what should we do? Play chess? <laughs> Screw? <laughs> Let's play chess. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, I've I've screwed the commute now for, oh gosh, two and a half decades, um, almost. So yeah, I'm, I'm ready to keep doing that. Well, tell everybody what you're what you're into lately, because there's a long chain of stuff you're doing here, and uh, I can't understand that blockchain and any of that cryptocurrency at all. I'm a, a different generation, must be, because I have no clue what it's about. Well, you know, I couldn't either until about oh, I'd say almost a year and a half ago, I started finally paying attention and and you know taking interest. It's like, all right, you know, I've got enough friends that are talking about this blockchain, Bitcoin, crypto thing. What? Explain it to me. And and I had a couple friends explain it to me. And once the the light went on, how revolutionary this technology is I would have these conversations with my friend Travis Wright, who's a leading marketing technologist and a really funny guy. And our conversations were back and forth every day on Messenger. And it was in July of 2017 that Travis messaged me and half sarcastically, jokingly said, when are we going to do the Joel and, and Travis crypto show? And the moment he said that, I thought, oh, my gosh, I know I know you're only being half serious, but that sounds like so much fun. And two days later, 
we launched the first episode of the Bad Crypto Podcast, which now we've done 200 shows um, and we're getting to travel and go around the world and speak on blockchain, perform our show live. We've got sponsors. We've had 5 million downloads in our first year. And, uh, and we're learning, you know, so like, you know, you're saying, I don't understand this. Well, we only kind of understood <laughs> the very basics when we started doing the show. And the idea was, hey, let's go down the rabbit hole and take people with us. Let's do this journey together. So rather than put ourselves out there as experts, um, you know, we connected with real people. And I think that's why the show has been successful is because we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're not financial advisors. We're, that's why it's the bad crypto podcast. <laughs> and uh, let's, this for everybody, uh, crypto is spelled C-R-Y-P-T-O. And so I guess they just search for that in iTunes or Google Play yeah. or something. Okay. Or go to or go to badcryptopodcast.com and you'll see all there the places we go. it's linked. Yeah. Perfect. Wow, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun with that, which leads us segues into the Fun Formula book. How did that come about? And I can kind of relate to that. I started speaking in the early 90s coming out of an entertainment company about humor in the workplace. But I think this is a, an expansion on that, isn't it? Well, it's more it's a lifestyle book more than mm -hmm. anything. It's not really about humor. It's more about how we approach our business and in our life in general. And, you know, there's a messaging out there right now that is just being pushed at people and especially at young people. And it's got these two words in it that just make me bristle. Hustle and grind. Mm. Hustle and grind. I just dislike this notion of work, 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 work. If you want it, you got to be up early. You got to stay late. And while these chump friends of yours are, you know, out on the lake on the weekend, you're getting <laughs> it because you're going to crush it. Now, hard work is a virtue. I think we'd all agree with yep. that. But somewhere along the line, some people decided that 10x the hard work was 10x the virtue. And, and it's not. What I did is I reverse engineered my 23 years of doing business online. And I looked at my home runs, of which there's been about seven, I would say, grand slams. And I looked at my failures, of which there's been more <laughs> than, yeah, than seven. Yeah, like all of us. And, yeah. and, and the in-between stuff. And I realized that the uh, the failures are actually where I spent more time, more effort, more of that hustle and grind. The greatest successes actually took the least amount of effort. And so then I, I broke it down further and I discovered that the reason they took the least amount of effort was because of these three components of what I'm calling the fun formula. It's not mathematical, so don't worry. <laughs> you don't need your protractor or ruler or calculator. You, you know what a calculator is. And I don't have to understand <laughs> cryptocurrency for this. You don't have to understand <laughs> crypto. Okay. It, it's about uh, being curious, right? Keeping and maintaining that childlike uh, nature or getting in touch with it again, right? That, that thing that made us feel creative and want to explore. It's about risk taking and understanding that when you take risks, you're going to fail a lot and being okay with that. And it's about serendipity. It's, it's trusting the process. It's knowing that things unfold in your life at their right time and, and everything doesn't have to happen right now. And, and all of my successes followed the same track. And so the fun formula is about finding your fun as the greatest pathway to success in business and more importantly, fulfillment in life. I'll tell you what, I'm right. Uh, you're preaching to the choir here, man. I mean, that's what I've lived my whole life. I mean, you can actually live a couple lives, you know, with the screw the commute, working for yourself and, and doing things that make you happy. And But did you ever have a job? What are some of the jobs you've had? Yeah, well, I started working when I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, I wanted money. Where are you from? I'm from the Chicago suburbs, Northbrook, okay. Illinois, home of John Hughes. Uh, so Ferris Bueller's Day Off, uh, 16 Candles, <laughs> those films were all shot. You know, they, he went to my high school. So uh, oh. Breakfast Club. So those were all based on the community that I grew up in, all those archetypes. Those were, you know, I was the geek. Uh, and I, I got a job at Northbrook Court in the food court, uh, slinging subs and pizzas at 14 years old. And I remember saving my money from those first jobs I had because in 1980, 
Radio Shack came out uh, with the TRS-80 right. Model 1 computer. Right. And, oh, Tom, that thing had 4K <laughs> of RAM, and the storage device was a cassette player. Yep. Uh, and it was just, it was the best. And I and I bought one of those computers, and I was dialing in to bulletin board services, which predate <laughs> the Internet, right. in 1980 at 300 bits per second. Uh, oh, my it God. Was, so I technically I've been It's more like three hundred bits per month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that means I've been in the online world for thirty eight years. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. we've dated both of us. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I was there and I, I wasn't so uh so much of a geek in those days. Uh I was loving this stuff, but I didn't really hit hard until the commercial part came around where mm-hmm. geeks like you invented stuff so non geeks like me could just make the money and click. <laughs> so that's what I I like. I, I hit the nineteen ninety four, which is when the commercial internet really started to roll. Sure. But yeah, uh, yeah that uh, I remember one of my first computers was a CPM machine. I don't know if you ever even heard of that. Of course. Yeah. But uh, it had a forty megabyte hard drive. <laughs> and you you would never fill that up. That was huge. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So and now uh, we've got three and four terabyte. Drives. Oh my god! Yeah. So. So what was the uh, turning point where you went from working for jobs to working for yourself? Well, you know, I did jobs uh, really up into my early adulthood, but I discovered I was a DJ in mm. uh, college. I was WPGU Rock 107 FM, Urbana Champagne's classic rock. <laughs> and and that led to doing nightclub DJ stuff mm-hmm. there in Shambana. And then uh, that led, when I graduated college, I started DJing in nightclubs in, in Dallas, Texas. I moved there right after college, and it was the peak of, you know, the 80s, the Miami Vice era. Right. And, and I found that I had an associate that was making a bunch more as a private DJ. He was mobile and he had these parties and I'm thinking I could do this. And that was my first real entrepreneurial success. I got my own gear, my Technics 1200 SL (laughs) turntables, big old bass cabinets and speakers. And I started doing pool parties and that led to wedding receptions and class reunions. And I did a couple hundred, I would say, of those and was supplementing um, that along with some sales. That's I I cut my teeth on Zig Ziglar back in Mm -hmm. 1989. Yeah. Secrets of closing the sale. I went to one of Zig's born to win seminars in Dallas and was deeply inspired. And I got a job uh, doing uh, sales of the emergency response systems. I've fallen and I can't get up <laughs> those. I used to go around and visit people in the poorest parts of, uh, of Texas, of uh, the Dallas, you know, area and uh, people that were sick. And, and I learned how to sell and help people with these units. And then I sold Encyclopedia Britannica's for You're about kidding. a year and a half. I nope. did that too when I was yeah. in uh, uh, high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. May, and, and I succeeded at it for a time. Mm-hmm. And, and in 1995, I transitioned from, uh, from sales. I also had a, I had a side job working for a couple nationally syndicated, syndicated radio ministries that was actually was full time, wasn't side, but I was supplementing that with, um, with DJing at the time. But in 1995, I started my internet business. Uh, I had one of the first 18,000 sites in the world on the World Wide Web. And by January of 1996, I left all everything else behind to pursue the internet business. Wow. Do you, do you remember that time? What, what was in your mind at that time? Because oh. you know, it was all wild west for us. I mean, I remember my first shopping cart cost 2000 bucks and was worse than the first Texas instrument calculator. And, <laughs> and, uh, you had to pay 1100 bucks to, to get from a different company to get an affiliate program hooked up. And then when it didn't work, they'd all blame each other. <laughs> it uh-huh. was total crazy. I mean, back in those days, I, I remember vividly trying to get my printer to print in landscape. And that was a big yeah. production. <laughs> I remember back in those days, <laughs> yeah. you had to walk barefoot through the snow to get an ISDN connection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we were. Yeah. Our first website was on a server that was on an ISDN. Mm -hmm. I remember it very well. I remember (laughs) it like yesterday. Um, You know, I remember being super excited about putting content on this this Internet that people would be able to use a web browser to view it from anywhere. And and I'll tell you, there's some similarities and parallels to 
the feeling that I had about the World Wide Web and the Internet back in 1995 and 96, the parallels to cryptocurrency right now, uh, we're going to see the crypto world blow up like the Internet blew up. And I would say that we are probably uh, is circa 1995 right now mm -hmm. with crypto, if you relate it to Internet terms. Were you able to do any HTML or did you dive into that? Uh, I did. I did some basic HTML enough to be dangerous. Well, you know, yeah, we had... I remember it took me a year to get the cover of my book on a Web page because <laughs> I had to, to depend on geeks until 97 when uh, Microsoft uh, – uh, front page came out and then right. man, that was when I really went crazy. I didn't have to wait for three months to get a typo fixed. <laughs> it's really funny. If you go to uh, archive.org, mm -hmm. it's the Wayback machine and yep. you put in my first website, it's a uh, worldvillage.com, which turned 23, um, years old, just, uh, just this last July. Uh, it's got snapshots dating all the way back to right, right. 1996, the earliest one I have in there is yeah. about a little over a year. And when you look at it and think, oh, <laughs> my Probably had gosh. a spinning globe on it. That was the uh, biggest it, thing. It wouldn't surprise could... <laughs> me. Uh, but it's got this. It, it, actually, you go look and it's got this cloud pattern background. It's HTML3. <laughs> uh -huh. um, you know, just a bunch of links and and, and Netscape, um, you know, little right. in Microsoft Internet Explorer uh, badges on it. And <laughs> wow. Probably a. A visitor counter. <laughs> Over 800,000 served. Yep, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, I, I, my, mine went up in 94, and I think the earliest, the uh, way back hit was 96 also, so it looks like 96. But yeah, we uh, predated yeah. Uh, the way back machine. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> I know, that's pretty, that's, uh, that's bad. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so what would you tell somebody that's uh, that's out there in the cubicle listening to this thinking, man, I want to live that kind of life, DJing and right, doing stuff on the web, and I'm tired of this uh, BS at the corporation. What, what, would, what tips would you give them to get the heck out of there? Well, you got to figure out where your fun is first, and, and odds are that it's going to somehow be connected to your passions, you know, your own curiosities, whether it's something you've worked before or whether it's, you know, a hobby that you have. Um, and, and then you need to be willing to say, how can I bring value to the world through this thing that I'm passionate about? Then comes the hard part, taking the risk and actually doing mm -hmm. something. This is where most people get stuck. And, you know, I think we hear it so often that it can become trite, but it's so true that if we're not willing to step out of the boat, we can't walk on water. Right. That's the only way you're going to know if you're going to sink or swim is is if you get out of the boat. And that takes courage and it takes an act of faith. It takes saying, I'm not going to settle for this life that I have. I want more. I don't want mediocre. I want excellence and, and I don't want to miss my opportunity. Uh, it's not all about the money. In fact, the money is a really small part of being fulfilled and happy in your life. You know, many studies have found that once there's enough, there's enough. You know, if, if, if a million dollars fell in my lap right now, it, it wouldn't change my lifestyle that much. And it's not because I'm a millionaire. I'm actually not at the moment. And that's a long story, you know, because we, we make and we lose. But once you have a lifestyle that, um, that you enjoy and you're comfortable in, then more money doesn't really change you know, that lifestyle much. It just gives you more to be responsible for. Um, but it also gives you more opportunities to give back and, and to do good. And that's what I encourage people to, uh, to do. Yeah. And I, I saw you on a Facebook live the other day, just strolling down through Denver and, uh, talking about the uh, beautiful, uh, the, the architecture that was there. And, uh, you seemed awful happy to me. Uh, I can remember uh, when you were more in the rat race than you are now, I think. Right. Well, it, maybe it looked that way. In fact, people people still ask me how I get so much done. And the truth is I probably have less time that I spend working, actually working now, than I have before because I've learned the secret to working smart and not working hard. And there's, there's a big difference. Uh, you know, working smart is the right moves, talking to the right people, making that right call, sending that right email, showing up. 
at, at that event where you don't necessarily know who's going to be there or what the benefit's going to be and opening yourself up to opportunity. And that's really, I think serendipity has played the greatest role of all. If I was going to prioritize these three, curiosity, risk-taking, serendipity, I would say that being open to opportunity without expectations, without knowing exactly what's going to happen. When we are open, we begin to see opportunity everywhere. And then we can get curious about that opportunity and decide if we're going to take a risk. But, you know, there's this mentality of if you want to, that door over there that's closed, if you want to get into it, you, but you know, bang on it until you break it down. <laughs> and I'm thinking that sounds like a lot of work. Right. <laughs> there's an open door right over there and there's a window cracked over there. Oh, and look, there's a car that'll take me down to that place. that has got opportunity over there. Uh, I just, I think that there's uh, people get tunnel vision and think this is the one thing I have to do. Now, I'm not saying that's not the case for some people, you know, and to, in rugged determinism and, you know, sticking through it is is virtuous if that's your thing. But being open to more. I had no idea I was going to do a cryptocurrency podcast. If you would have told me, you know, uh, uh, even January of 2017 that I was going to do that, I would have said, what? <laughs> I, I don't know anything about that, but I opened myself up to opportunity and I took a risk. I followed my curiosity and, and then magic happened. And you said this is a, a in some cases, a live show. Uh, no, it, it is. Uh, it's recorded. Uh, we do four episodes a week. No, but I meant uh, not the, the podcast, but didn't you say you were out speaking on it and doing a, oh, yeah, doing yeah. a we, live uh, show with the other guy? Yeah, now that uh, the podcast has had success and we have fans out there, we get invited to events, uh, sometimes to speak, but sometimes they want us to do Bad Crypto Live. And so mm -hmm. we, we adapt you know, what we do on the show to the stage. And we've probably done that, I don't know, half a dozen times so far. So you're just setting up like like as if you were doing a podcast and doing it right there from the stage? Right, but, but we're adapting it. We're making it more interactive right, with, right. with the audience. Of course, yeah. yeah. Oh, now, uh, is there a schedule of that or is that a, you know, you know, catch as catch can kind of thing? Well, I would give you the schedule, but since this interview is yeah. going to air. Let's see where are the upcoming events? Uh, Bad Crypto Podcast. Bad Crypto Podcast. Li okay. Listen to the show because we talk about where we're going to be next. Perfect. Perfect. Now, have you ever gotten screwed over in business? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, how long do we have? Right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you three instances um and i'll be brief so i could fit them all in one tell what time, you did about it too sure one time i discovered um that a gentleman i had put in trust of my staff which was a smaller staff at the time um was embezzling from me mm. and so i called the police and uh, he's he's still he, his check is still being um pulled from today because naturally he was found guilty and i, I get like a hundred dollars a month and at this rate um, for 100 I, I, years right yeah i won't be paid back <laughs> you know before i'm gone assuming i live to 100 um and then i don't know if that's actually true but it's very slow another time i hired somebody to uh, to be the president for my company and it kind of took me off track by and i take responsibility for the hire and i take responsibility for um for kind of taking my eyes off the ball but he almost destroyed my company and, uh, and he was fired. And uh, another time somebody took their own AdSense code and having access to my website as, you know, one of my tech guys right. put his, his code on my pages and was making money in ads mm. um, from my page views. Wow. There's, that's, that's just a few. And well, he got fired. Yeah. And there's some good <laughs> lessons uh, there for, for people is even, you know, so I've got trusted people here that have been here over 10 years. They don't have access to everything. Uh, right. you, you know, it's um, you just don't you, know, you can't uh, give the keys to the farm away, although on one hand, you do need people to help you to grow a business if you're going to really expand. But uh, you just have to uh, be very careful and, and cognizant. You can't just uh, give somebody everything and say, oh, OK, they got it handled and then keep your head in the sand and just do only the fun things. You do have to pay attention to some of the other things, too, or it can bite you. 
So, Absolutely. Uh, but you've and, done. And by the way, yeah. Tom, I'm I'm now a solo printer again, and mm-hmm. happier than I've ever been. I know uh, that. No more, yeah. No more employees. No more payroll. All contractors. No more going to even an office of my own creation. My my commute is now you know uh, 25 steps, and uh, I love it. Quit teasing me, man. You know I got the <laughs> overhead that's really overhead. <laughs> so. Uh, any, th- I know you, you, didn't you create some funny, bizarre app or something one time? What's that all about? <laughs> I did create a funny, bizarre app back in 2008 when uh, Steve Jobs said, we are now making the software development kit available for the iPhone. I pulled my team into the conference room and it was primarily males at that time. And we had one of the first thousand apps in the iTunes app stores called iVote. Uh, But that wasn't the one that became infamous. The one that became infamous was in December of 2008. We released unto the world the novelty app that defined novelty apps, (laughs) the the world-famous iFart mobile application. (laughs) Do I have to make this episode explicit now because of that? (laughs) Uh, Maybe. I don't know. It could be explosive. Maybe not explicit, but yeah, it was was something. It went to number one in the entire (laughs) iTunes app store for uh, just over three weeks. It got covered uh, media attention all over the world. And, you know, we're coming up on our uh, our 10th anniversary of the app and it still sells every day. (laughs) Oh, that's great. It's a gift that keeps giving. There you go. So what do you like best about working for yourself and what's the worst part? Um, I think what's best is freedom, right? I do what I want when I want, and I've gotten really good at not chasing the money. Uh, if it's not aligned with what sounds interesting or fun to me, then I don't want to do it. And I find that I'm much happier not doing things if it's just about the money. Um, the, the hardest part, um, self-employment taxes, maybe <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I love it so much. I can't imagine doing anything else. I am literally unemployable. I, oh, I remember too, yeah. ba- back in 1997, um, I launched a game site with a, a grad student in San Diego. We called it classicgames.com, and um, it got acquired by Yahoo, and it became Yahoo Games. And that was one of my, my first home runs. And I remember shortly after the sale, the, my contact at Yahoo said, would I be interested in, in uh, perhaps talking to them about coming to work as a producer? at Yahoo and their entertainment division. And and I knew in an instant, no, I (laughs) I have absolutely no no desire to uh, work for anybody else, let alone move to California. Um, You know, as much as I love visiting California and I love my friends out there, zero, zero desire to live out there. And, um, and I've had people throw things, you know, at me uh, since then. You don't, you don't understand. I cannot work for anybody else it has to be on my terms yeah i mean i i like i said i've never had a job since high school and it's uh i you know if i don't like you it's take a hike you know it's it's you don't have to deal with you and that's the that's the big one for me is i don't like dealing with people that being forced to deal with people you don't like and that's what 99 percent of the corporate world is in fact I think they did a study. This was the sad part when you were talking about you got to take a risk. They, some study came out that like 98 point something percent of people in the corporate world wish they had their own business, but virtually none of them will do anything about it. And that's what I'm kind of on a mission to help them get out of that mindset because this this world that you and I live is just spectacular. Even when we have losses and, and things don't work, it's still about a hundred times better than going in that cubicle every day. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about it. I mean, the when I see people stuck in rush hour and when when I hear people saying, "Oh man, it's Monday," <laughs> or "Hey, it's Hump Day," or "Thank God it's Friday," I think must suck if that's if if you're unhappy enough in what you're doing that this is what you're giving your waking hours to. Five days, Joe. I'll be honest, I sometimes I don't know what day it is, and right? I don't care, <laughs> right? People I, say, I well, you no must idea. be crazy, you're losing your mind. No, 
I lost my mind a long time ago of being forced into that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh my god! Oh, if I don't, if it's Monday and I don't have anything that I put on the calendar or I don't feel like working, I won't. If it's Saturday and I'm feeling motivated to do something, I will. Uh, if it's midnight. <laughs> and sometimes I get some of my best stuff done at midnight, and I sleep in until I'm ready to get out of bed. Some mornings at 7.30, some mornings at 9.30. Uh, and it's just – you are in control. You are truly the boss uh, and the master of your own universe. That's what we like. Uh, and the boss in the corporate world uh, is spelled backwards is double S-O-B. By the way. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> <true>. <laughs> hey, tell That's them about true. your – your book, uh, how they acquire it, and then we're going to have a little message from our sponsor, and we'll get into some other uh, uh, quick stuff. So well, tell them about the book. The book is really written for um, all ages. You know, if you've got a student in high school or college, this is kind of like putting skin on oh the places or putting meat on oh the places you'll go. If uh, you know you're just starting your career or you're in a job and you want out, or if you're retiring and moving on from one thing to another. This is going to inspire people. You can go to funformulabook.com and learn more about the book. And you can also claim a number of uh, free bonuses, including two of my other books for free. And I hope that you guys go get a copy. I think uh, that and it makes for great gifts. Yes, that's what I was going to say. It sounds like a perfect book to uh, to give. Uh, and, uh, maybe, I don't know if you have a... Uh... Uh, I mean, this is something you could buy 30, 40 copies of and, and your friends would love you for this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And where do you see the cover of it? When you go go look on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, it's, it's, it's a party in and of itself. It's unlike any other business book, and it goes beyond business to your life. And I think there's a lot of people that are going to be liberated, um, and they're going to enjoy this read. Beautiful. Now, we're going to take a quick message from our sponsor, and then when we come back, going to have Joel tell us what a typical day looks like for him, but I, I'm afraid <laughs> there might not be an answer to that question, and how he stays motivated. So uh, we'll be right back. Now, do you know, does everybody know out there what colleges and universities are doing? According to gradeinflation.com, they're raising grade point averages to make it look like they're doing a better job of teaching when there's a mountain of evidence that says they aren't. I want you to watch the really eye-opening higher education webinar at screwthecommute.com slash 48. This is episode 48. You'll also see all Joel's stuff there. Uh, but this could potentially save yourself and possibly your loved ones, friends, and neighbors hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt when they go for higher education. So check that out, screwthecommute.com slash 48. Now we're back with uh, Super Duper, New York Times bestselling author, Joel Kahn, a guy I've known for many years, never heard a bad word about him, and uh, that's uh, pretty much the way I roll. I've got a uh, consumer advocate television show in development called Scam Brigade, so I'm very careful of uh, who I deal with, and this guy has got a, just a, a, a maximum stellar reputation. So, Joel, tell him... Uh, What's your days look like? When you get up, you exercise, eat, the, the whole bit. What's a lifestyle for Joel Com look like? And then tell them how you stay motivated. Uh, I sleep in until I'm ready to get up. You know, now if I have an appointment schedule, for example, you and I, you know, have mm -hmm. a recording at, at 945 this morning here. I'm in Denver, so in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I had to go, okay, uh, if I get up a little earlier, I can go take my walk. And that's what I like to do. I usually try and get out for an hour for a, a brisk walk mm -hmm. and, you know, get my circulation going, try not to blow up because I like to eat, you know, so moving the body, I think is a really good idea. And then my day, it goes around the appointments that I have made. Uh, there's like, as of right now, I actually have six calls today. So it's a heavy day. Five of them are interviews for the Bad Crypto Podcast. And one mm -hmm. of them is an advisory call. Uh, but I look at tomorrow and I've got one thing on the calendar. You know, so every day is different. And that's one of the things I love so much right. about being, you know, an entrepreneur and in business for myself. Every day is different. I've got, you know, my mom is coming in to visit from Chicago this week. And so, you know, I've kept it a little lighter intentionally. Um, you know, in most of my week, nothing is as heavy as today. 
the rest of the week is very light. And I do what I want. You know, I eat when I want. I'll hang out with friends. I'll get on phone calls and catch up with people. I might go live on uh, on Facebook or on Periscope, if I feel like there's something I want to say, uh, I might read. I might go sit on my balcony. I'm on the 23rd floor in Denver facing the mountains, and I've just got this incredible view. Uh, you know, so it's every day is different. Hey, why don't you send and, us a picture of, so we can put it in the show notes? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great of that a beautiful view. That That's that's my life, man. It's, yeah. Uh, it's very casual. It's it's laid back. I'm not into the you know, I, I'm you know you're, you're about a decade older than me. I'm 54, and I am at this place in my life where I'm not going to chase money, uh, and I'm not going to chase opportunity. I'm going to let it come to me, and I'm going to be laid back and enjoy my life. And and in doing so, I think I'm more effective in helping other people. You know, this book, The Fun Formula, is my 15th book, and it is my most personal book. It's, it's you know, all the other books have been uh, strategies and tactics, Twitter, right. Google, internet marketing. This is, uh, this is core, and I have to apply the same fun formula to my life. You know, I, I have to practice what I preach. Yeah, and I don't think you waste a lot of money either on, um, like, razor blades. I don't think I've ever seen you shave. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a trimmer and an electric razor. Man, isn't and, that nice uh, when you don't have to? Like, you just get up and who gives a shit? Oop, uh, there's my explicit. Yeah. Who gives a darn if you're if you didn't shave today? That's yeah, uh, that's, yeah. Only my girlfriend maybe, and, and well, she maybe. doesn't complain much either. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, what keeps you motivated? Uh, I think just the the beauty of waking up each day and knowing that I get to do what I want to do and that there's, there's no urgency to perform. It's, you know, it's all uh, the magic of what's going to happen next and what do I get to do today and who do I get to influence? You know, where, where will I make an impact that will leave a mark? You know, how, how will somebody's life be changed or affected in a way it, we're not even aware of what we're doing most of the time. You know, when you're putting content out there, very few people write you to say, hey, I really appreciate this. Most of the people you impact, you never hear from, right. but you just know it's out there. And, um, and hopefully that, you know, my life uh, means what I've done means something. And so that's what uh, keeps me going. That yeah. I love to travel. And, you know, as a speaker um, and doing the show, I think uh, by the time this airs, I'll have been to Moscow. You know, I just <laughs> right, came back right. from Ireland. I've been to Chile this year. I've uh, been to Switzerland. And I just I love the adventure. On you, now, be careful you don't get accused of colluding with anybody in any of these places. <laughs> right, <so>. yeah, yeah, Russia <laughs> hacked my vote. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so... Uh, what parting thoughts would you have for all our, we call them screwballs out there, that want to break out and, and get in doing something for themselves? It, no guts, no glory. you got to start somewhere and, and do, even if it's just baby steps every day, start somewhere. Do something. Nobody gets to their deathbed and says, oh, I wish that I had worked you know, an extra five hours at my job each week. Or uh, I wish that I had made, you know, more money. Um, you know, they, the, it, the things that they regret are missing out on their relationships and on experiences. Do something. Don't just stay stuck in the system. It's in your power and in your control. And if you're not feeling empowered, it's because you've allowed yourself, you've convinced yourself, you've allowed society or parents or teachers or peers to convince you that this is what you have to do. There is always a different route. Look for that other way. Great words from somebody that's uh, living the lifestyle, walking the talk. So thanks, Joel, so much for taking the time to uh, talk with me and catch up. It's been, been a while, a couple years since I've got a chance to talk to you. And uh, great advice and inspiration for all you screwballs out there is do something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, screwballs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a big world out there. And one of the things I love, and this is perfect for the fun formula, is is uh, you can make your hobbies tax deductible. You know, I'm mm -hmm. still always going to think of the money aspect. So, so. What a great time we live in, Tom. Oh, there is more yeah. opportunity out there now than ever 
before. I mean, people are getting paid to drive total strangers around. They're getting paid to walk people's dogs. I have groceries delivered, you know, to, right. to my door. There, there is just there's so much opportunity and ingenuity and ways to serve people. Find a way within your your know, skill stack to serve people and they will pay you. They will. And it's in the tools, especially the Internet level tools are, are so cheap and free and, and so powerful. It's just unbelievable that, uh, that what we have today is than when Joel and I started way back when. I mean, you can leave a voicemail for me for free through a thing called SpeakPipe right at the on Antion.com or ScrewTheCommute.com, and I get an email, and I hear, hear you talking to me. <laughs> I mean, all free. I mean, it'd be just amazing. That's why I love the geeks and the propeller heads because they invent all this stuff that I use to get rich. So, <laughs> <laughs> so please, everybody, subscribe and review you want uh, more great uh, guys like Joel on here and women like Joel? Uh, no, it's not women like Joel, is it? No. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know you for a while. I haven't seen you for a while. But uh, but uh, check out all his stuff. Get the freebies and pick up multiple copies of that book because people are going to love you for giving it as a gift for sure. And they'll thank you for it for sure because he doesn't put out any uh, bad stuff. And this is uh, screwthecommute.com slash 48 will take you right to the show notes uh, that'll get you to all the stuff Joel talked about and the higher education webinar that I want you to check out. If you have any need for that, please check that out. It'll save you a fortune. And please remember to check out my Monday training session on repurposing, how to sell what you know in 19 different ways. You do not want to miss that. So, I will catch everybody in the next episode. Thanks so much. We'll see you later.